What's up guys? I am Warmaster Moloch and this is an early game start guide that has been long sought after to play as the best, the most popular, the premier legendary lord in Total War Warhammer. I am of course talking about Tretch Craventail and I am of course speaking sarcastically because absolutely no one chooses to play as Tretch and I don't think that's fair because Tretch Craventail is not as bad as people say he is. I know everyone puts the memes out there and oh he's there with Throg and all the other shit ones but no. Tretch is actually no worse than Queek Headtaker and because he's a Skaven, he's in fact really quite good and he has an interesting start position because he winds up fighting the Dark Elves and the High Elves very quickly because you've got uh, Clark around here, we've got a non-aggression pack with them, but you start at war with the Forge Bounds, you've got Karonkar there, Nagarond up here, down here you've got Alariel the Eternal Warmonger, Tyrion almost always, con well Tyrion always confederates her and then you have to deal with him. And you also have Alithanar here, and he becomes a problem really quite quickly. So I'm going to tell you how to set Tretch up for success and have fun with a lord that people unfairly dismiss. Let's get started. First thing you do. You get yourself the weapon stuff, and you get rid of this bloody melee infantry um, building, because it's shite. Then... You get rid of your storm vermin and you get rid of your death runners because they are also pretty much completely worthless. You might also want to get rid of your doom wheel, but nah, I don't really bother with that. Get yourself some Skaven slaves. Actually, just to save a little bit on income, I know it's a trivial amount, but get the Skaven slave spears first and then you get your Skaven slave slingers. Now, something that is good about Clan Rictus is down here. Eventually, once you've... Hang on. Try and... Find the right spot. God, this is always annoying. Down here. You have an undercity at um, Rictus Clan Nest in Crookback Mountain, which is where Tret should really be located. Um... Obviously, that's not particularly helpful, and I've got to tell you right now, don't get particularly attached to these guys, because they'll probably declare war on you. They almost always do. But what I eventually do down here is I, when I've got the spare money, get the subterranean pit so that I can start spreading more under cities around for food, and also so that I can meet um, Clan Eshin and Confederate Deathmaster Snitch. One of those handy little dandy bonuses that you get with Tretch, who is great. It's just aggravating working your way around this bloody map. Right, we're going to end that turn there. Something that's a factor here is that these are normally referred to as like first 20 turn guides, yada yada yada. It might go longer than 20 turns here, guys, because this campaign starts out slow, specifically because there's not really a lot of food in this area. So you have to make the best of what you've got available. Clan Rictus Supreme. Yeah. So more Skaven Slave Slingers. And then we're going to get... Uh, I'm going to say get this one for now just because I want to unlock it. Let's have a quick look. So Devious Plans will reduce the cost of our Skaven Slave units. I will get rid of that after we've got Devious Plans, and then we'll get Ferocious Plans. It's just that extra one recruitment is not that useful right now. Now, because we built the weapon stump, we can recruit warp fire throwers and we want three of those straight away we're going to get six of them in total and the reason why we want those is because they do horrendous damage very quickly now the reason why tretch has been moved from round about here over to behind hotex column in fact i'm going to move a little bit further behind 
what? Like to there. Scamper, scurry. It's because we can't hide while recruiting. We can't go into ambush stance. And the Dark Elves are going to come and attack us through here. And by hiding here or positioning ourselves here, that means that the garrison will come in behind them, which is useful to us from a tactical perspective. Now we're going to set to recruit another three units of warp fire throwers here. We're almost certainly going to be attacked now. Obviously, if we aren't attacked, then we'll head out afterwards. But yeah, I really, really think it's almost invariably what happens here. That is reducing the upkeep, uh, the um, recruitment cost. So we'll leave that alone for a sec. I'm expecting Dark Elves to come cruising through here. Okay, they besieged, which actually kind of works for us as well. That is the other alternative that's there. Either they would march straight past it, which to be fair, they usually do. They march past Hotex Column and attack you, or they go for the siege. It's a walled settlement, so the siege actually um, gives us a bit of extra time. Now, we no longer get much hope of an ambush when doing this. But we can just attack them regardless. It obviously means that we missed out on our recruitment there because they attacked Hotex Column and besieged it. But we can deal with that. As you can see, this is not a good army. They've only got this range stuff here to their advantage. We've got more than enough to deal with that. So let's get on with it. So what we're going to do we are going to use the garrison to our advantage and just let them take the brunt of the hit because with the starting plan I have in mind you don't really have to worry about this garrison coming under attack again for a while at least we just want to capitalize on the warp fire throwers as the damage dealers. Now this, we should be hidden across the bar here. So let's make sure. Yeah, everyone's hidden. That gives us time to get in order. And we'll get a couple of units of night runners here that will help with the skirmishing. I will not not run flee. Take those to there. Quick, quick. And then we're going to do three to there. Because even the Skaven slaves that we have in our army are more important than the garrison. Because the garrison don't count, basically. So we'll send the Skaven slave slingers forward. Because now the enemy are roaming around, we want them to know where we are and just come in sort of piecemeal. And then get incinerated by these, because these are going to do most of the killing. Like, by distance, these will do most of the killing. Go for there. Go for there. Stick him there. forward a bit more. Go to there. Lure some units away. Especially the general, because the general's a pain in the ass. Take skirmish mode off. Rattling guns. Ah, sorry, rattling guns. Warp fire throwers do a lot less against single entities than it does to units of infantry. 
So if we can lure some of these units away, that's very advantageous to us, especially that general there. Whoa, 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 don't get into melee, don't get into melee, lads. There you go, like half of the army is now chasing these um, essentially worthless garrison units that actually do a fair bit of damage. Then we'll go into skirmish mode and then we can just basically leave them to do their thing for a bit. Well, that was the theory. That was definitely the theory. And then they almost wandered straight into an attack. Right, how are the Skaven Slave Slingers getting on? Okay, they're doing fine. Obviously, they're not going to do well against these hand bows. They will not be able to resist coming in to hit Trek. So let's turn these around. And we will absolutely melt these. Watch the damage these do straight away. Now I'm going to bring the Doom Wheel round to there. Trek can go to there. Gone. One volley. All gone. Basically. Yeah. Tretch comes to here, that'll lure them into attacking. Let's do that, get them in melee. Two units about to go here. Doom Wheel can go for there. And there you go, we're just cycling through them. And there goes the Doom Wheel, taking out this unit of Corsair Hambos. We'll send Tretch in to deal with that. Right, how are these getting on? These have done a good job of luring, that looks like, three whole units there. Chase them down. And you know what? Let's bring a unit of warp fire throwers around here just to get rid of this unit of dread spears. They're annoying me. Let's just kill them. We'll bring the Skaven slaves back because there's no reason for them to die. We got this situation thoroughly under control. Let's take them out. That unit has probably just evaporated. Almost. There's a bit of friendly fire there, but hey, we're Skaven. That's what we do. Here come the other units in here now. We have to get ready for this. Which means you need to fire. There we go. These can come to here now. Skaven Slave Slingers back up front. Oh wow, these are still not dead. Really? Re-fucking Al E. Bring these back to here. And these to here. Oh, these ones are over here. Okay. That's fine. You just keep distracting that. Tretch can get back to here. Uh, it's a unit there, it's in melee, didn't want the Ah, there we go, that's fine. Hurry. 
Doom Wheel's getting a bit messed up there. Let's get it out of the way. Get it over there. Charge that unit there while these sling at it. There we go. Let's get Tretch out the way. Because I'll say that general is not fucking about. They're really hard to kill with warp fire throwers, that is. Stick that there. Turn that round. You go for there. You go for there. The Doom Wheel can come round the back here now. General surrounded and taking serious damage at last. Try and chase these down. Oh, hello. Didn't notice that. Charge that down. Ambos are messing Tretch up. It is what it is. We've just got to tough it out. And do a bit of element dodging. Right, get Tretch to there. And pull the warp fire throwers back a little bit. Charge through this. Bring one. Uh, no, 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 no. We don't want to bring more fire throwers around there. Tretch needs to get away from there. These are almost out of ammo, so that's fine and all. If the Doom Wheel routes, that's fine. We just. This general is pissing me off. I absolutely hate dealing with generals with warp fire throwers, but that's what we've got to deal with at this stage. Okay, that's done. Tretch is routing, that's okay. There we go. Get rid of that. Right. Let's get these to do something over here. Tretch is probably going to leave the battlefield, that's okay. Oh no, Tretch is back in action. It's fine, he can just stay out of there. Probably should tank that for the moment. Bring the cat 
Right, let's go for the Hambos. And we've won. So it was a big, messy battle, but we did the damage that we needed to, and we won the fight. I even lost track of these wherever they were. They could have done some damage for us. They're over here. Right? No, no, no. Yeah, it's a big, messy, micro-intensive battle, but simple enough win in the end. You can see the number of kills the warp fire throwers got there compared to everything else. We definitely want to go food. You need to get food in this campaign because you just don't get very much of it. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. We can get a better ambush chance here. Oh, no, we can't. We can get root marching. Yeah, we'll get ambush chance later on. Yeah, the auto resolve on these is always pretty poor at this stage just because of the number of Skaven slaves we've got. Okay, so we didn't get the ambush, but we've got Vanguard here on a map which very much suits us. What we'll do is we'll just run these into this area here, and then the warp fire throwers can kill through the middle. Uh, we'll leave Tretch and the Doom Wheel here. Well, I'll put the Doom Wheel there because it does shoot after all. Nice and easy. Obviously lots of casualties because we're playing with majority Skaven slaves, but it's all good. We're going to hop inside Hotex Column for that extra replenishment because we definitely need it. And we're going to get those three extra use of Warp Fire Throws. Them choosing to besiege us, which they normally don't do, is actually disadvantageous for us. We're going to get the growth building now. And Ancient Cunning.
and we go to let's go to here first and see what we see yeah that should be fine we'll just walk towards that and now what we're going to do it will get one turn into fight dirty but what we're really going to do is get the growth building up and then start on that line When we attack Twisted Glade, I'm expecting the auto resolve to be absolute trash. There you go. And now we will go to Ferocious Plans for that extra recruitment capacity. Yeah, see, that's trash. Four units of range, yeah, that's problematic and everything, but it's not that problematic. Let's fight them. And we've got six units of a massive damage-dealing unit here. These things are absolutely lethal. And we got Vanguard, so we're going forward against them. Put our Skaven Slaves here and here. Oh, just need the Duke Tretch about to deal with the, uh, the ranged units. Or waste their ammo anyway, put it that way. Tretch needs to get out of there because he's going to get whacked. Doom without it. I actually don't care if this gets destroyed at this stage. It's done the main thing that I needed, which is get us through the early battles. And there we go, Kentucky Fried Dark Elf. Yep, Doom Wheel's gone, couldn't care less at this stage. It's got us through the main thing that we needed it to. So we sack Twisted Glade. Got good money here at the moment. Call me 
And then you can, if you want, choose to sack City here. I personally don't tend to. Take it straight to tier 3, even though it puts us in bad food. Ancient Cunning again. And then here you go for... Walls, because you want walls. And then you get this Engineer building, so you can get Plague Claw, Catapults, and a Warlock Engineer. I'm not going to bother getting anything else in there. I think it's a waste of money at this stage. And we're going to ignore that too. Because any rebellions will come at Hotex Column. We can deal with that later. Now, as far as our actual damage dealing units go, we're only slightly down on a couple of these units of warp fire throwers, so I'm thinking move out to there. So you get replenishment there. And go ambush stats. There will be another army around the monoliths. We want them to come out and attack us. If we don't get the ambush, we'll get enough range to retreat from there. We've now encountered Nagarith. Obviously, that makes things complicated because they're High Elves. High Elves are tough. They've got even more ranged units than our Dark Elf buddies do. Okay, they didn't come out. Because they didn't see us. Which is fine. We got that little bit of extra replenishment, especially for Tretch. We're going to come to here. Let's see what we can see. Start building the walls there. Go to there. There's very little there to worry about. But we want them to come out and try their luck. Go for Driven with Hunger, Driven by Hunger, whichever it is there. This is all good. Okay, they came out and went for it, and they didn't have nearly enough to get away with it. Bingo, bango. Get more food. That gave us a lot of food there. Now, here's where we start to get a bit cheesy, because we are going to be using... The monolith is the sack city. Now, here's the thing. Our next target will be Karond Kar. If one of their armies comes around and decides to try and take the broken lands, yes. which does happen sometimes, uh, take the monoliths, I should say, in the broken land, uh, in the Claude Coast, then we should attack them to get the extra food and get the war going with them early. It's just the smart thing to do at this stage. But for now, go to there. Attack, fight! That auto-resolve is bullshit. You think about what we faced earlier on, and that was harder for us. Get going. Yeah, sorry, it had a better auto-resolve than this. Let's fight. Just going to line up here using the Vanguard deployment. See, people talk shit about Tretch, but that Vanguard deployment is actually very useful at this stage. Once you've got Jezails, it means absolutely jack shit, but still.
And there we go. Another victory! Yes, yes! The Druki do not beg. Scarry. Sack it, because we got food off of that, and we're just rebuilding our food from here. We're going to go into a cap stats again. Well, will we? No, do you know what? We're going to go raid because we want more food coming in. Because that's what we're really doing here is building up our food, waiting for the rebellion here so we can go around and get it, and then we'll take the monoliths afterwards. Andalithanar want? wants a fight, apparently. Oh, no, he just wants to blackmail us. Well, he's not getting any money out of us at all. We've encountered him, but from the looks of it, he hasn't really moved north. Good, good. I mighty. Let's have a look quickly. Ah, he's at Hack Hall. He's got. Yeah, okay. He's kind of on course. He's a little bit slower than normal, I would say. He's ordinarily further up than that. Go for bonded service because we're going to be getting play claw catapults soon. I'll get help. But yes, yes. Rate us ready for fight scrap. Raise it. I hate it. Call me Lord Craven Tail. Just keep getting that food. This place is one away from being rock solid. Nothing can stop me, me. Don't think to outsneak me, me. Yeah, obviously they want peace now. That's a lot of money, to be fair, at this stage, but there's no point. We'd much rather have the food and keep killing them. Food, money. All good. I leave my musk here. Be sneaky. Opportunity. Fight from rear. We do not fear death. Answer to me, me. Clan Rictus. We want to get him to lightning strike. Stretched Craven Tail is Stretch's victory only. Which we ain't far away from now. This place is fully walled. Means it's now actually more valuable than Hotex Column in a way. Um because it has the better stuff inside. Or well, this has good stuff, but not the particular one. Uh probably should have got this out sooner, actually. There isn't a really good one here, but we'll just go for this one. Should have really got him out as soon as we had the access, which was a couple of turns ago at least. 13th scheme we're not going to activate. Now what I do want to do now is go over here because we've got money. And we're going to build this one and this one so we're going to get some food off of that because this costs food and money because we want to spread under cities around so that we have that option for food later on because as i say uh Tretch's position very few food buildings unless you go in against caron car i think once you've taken uh not caron car clark Harond, once you've taken that one you get a food building from there because that's a monster location But that's outside of the kind of realm of this particular guide. I mean, these auto resolves are really flattering then. Just because we've got Skaven slaves in there. Burn fire! It's all! Yes, yes! Victory! 
And now Tretch has got Lightning Strike. And you know what? I actually think this is a good time to go in and get the Monoliths. And here we will again go Walls. We will get Public Order. And we'll get this one because I want a Plague Priest. Pricey stuff. Pricey stuff. We've got control now of this entire province and there's going to be a rebellion soon. We're going to go for expansionist planning for the growth because we want to build up Hotex Column. Do you know, we don't need the Plague Clause for taking out My the Rebels when they come. We'll go for that one next. Just to get that extra replenishment break. Speed that up. That'll give us some food. Which again, we need because we've just spent a load. Yeah, they've uh, gone in on Hotex Column. Go away with that nonsense. Dominating scheme is in. Okay. We're going to go to there. We'll stick him in there for the experience. We should be able to auto this. Get food again. Under other circumstances, you could like drag that out for two battles, but I don't think that's necessarily worth it at this stage. You go for a standardized firing drill there. Call me Lord and we'll head back up to the monoliths. Note that we're not going to go for expansionist planning right now because we want to save that until we're looking at getting the broken lands under control because then you can get it to benefit Hotex Column and um, Caron Car. because you can't tier 5 either of them at this stage you don't have enough food and that's why the tier 4 cheese I don't often use it anyway but it's especially bad for Tretch's campaign in my opinion go to there and we're going to start recruiting Four units of Plague Claw Catapults. Bleak Holds are still holding out. Let's go and have a look at them, see how they're getting on. Sometimes by this stage, they will have actually fallen to a Lithanar, but they've actually fought him off at Hag Hall, so that was good. That gives us a bit more time there. We're going to hold off on this. Wall's there. Let's get ourselves a Plague Priest. Not a Warlock Engineer, a Plague Priest. Perceptive or Sharp Teeth? Nah, neither of them are particularly good. We'll go for Perceptive, because that might give us... Um, some decent magic items. And saying that, are there any magic items we can put on this guy? No, not really. Nah, that's all fine.
Now we are going to head up in this direction because it's time to start attacking these. And we're going to get rid of that unit now. Negative income now, but we'll be fine. Ruthless plans, we'll get that extra food generated. That'll be useful. What we're going to do, we're going to hit Slaver's Point for food and money. Then we're going to bounce over, take Blacklight Tower, and come back through Slaver's Point and Caron Car. And we can, we need to start doing that, actually. Let's do that now. We'll get plenty of money for the sack when we hit Slaver's Point. Money situation not ideal, but Ready. Yes, yes. this is okay. Back soon. Yeah, that auto resolve, in my it's opinion, battle. flatters them I once again, faster. but we didn't really lose anything there. Kill, Sack it. Fight, and then we're going to go forced march. Because their army will normally be at Caron's car, not the Black Light Tower. Even if they had an army at the Black Light Tower, with this kind of force that we have here, we don't especially need to worry about um, Dark Elf forces. I'm going to reduce upkeep here. I know people don't particularly like that on Skaven, but in the early game, it's worth it when you're putting together a strong army like this. We're going to get extra ammo. And he's going to get Pestilent Breath. Harsh production quotas, we want that extra growth. Our money situation is now looking very nice. And we've got good public order at Hotex, uh, at the Claude Coast now. I've sent a hero over there, but that's not a worry for us in the slightest. Your prestige grows, my lord. News of your conquest. Yes, yes, yes. Our prestige grows. Blah, blah, blah. Yes. Paxton. Whatever, buddy. Up yours. Clan Rick us ready to war. fight scrap. Sack it. Now, this place, we're not going to tier 3. It's not worth it for the food. We're just getting it so that they don't have it anymore and they're easier to wipe out as we move through this territory. So let's have a look and see which ones we want to go for here. That ambush success chance is nice, but we'll hold off on that for now. I want to get costs down. Because when you've got this first army, getting your costs down so that you can have a second one is always worth considering. Because this army is expensive. You definitely want Vermintide for your Plague Priest at this stage. That will help make up for the fact that you don't have as many Skaven Slaves for tanking. Our money situation is cool. That's very slow, so let's just repair that now. So, as you can see, they're raiding the Blacklight Tower. That means we're going to go looking for them. There they are. 
Okay, so we're going to go into ambush stats there. We want to catch that army out. If we get that, they're basically defenseless. That's their lord, lady, whatever. Cult of Pleasure is Confederated Bleak Holds. So that's going to make it harder for Alithanar. It's going to give us a much bigger challenge as the campaign goes on, getting rid of them. But then High Elves, Dark Elves, it's the same kind of thing. We're setting up to be ready for that challenge regardless. They've embedded a hero in there. This guy's got us some more ammo. Let's have a look at this army. Foolish request. It's solid. I mean, they've got a lot of range in there. That's unfortunate. But we Sneak have play claw catapults. They didn't spot the ambush. The lightning strike makes it even easier. But we are dwarves. Who the hell cares? Um, we're going to use our play claw catapults against them. Let's have a look at this map. Our food situation is catastrophic, as you can see. This is the challenge you face. We've got limited growth, public orders diminishing. It's just generally not a great situation, but this will get us fed a bit. Battle fight. Get going. This map is one of the worst um, ambush maps in the entire game, but we'll do fine. I just need to pick the right spot here. This is normally a favourite, but I want to basically batter these as fast as I can. We've got the play claw catapults, which makes that a lot easier. So if we go like that, yeah, we can hit everything there. And then I'm thinking go with four units there. Actually, three and three. Got this guy who can influence all of them. Ready, steady, go. Two there and two there. These aren't really going to make any difference except as distraction. Skaven slaves here and here. Let's check our firing lines because that's super important when you're dealing with any weapons teams, but especially warp fire throwers. Like, that is not a good line. I mean, it's not terrible, but it's not great either. So let's bring those two there. Yeah. Go like that. And then we will put the Plague Priest here. I'm thinking have both units of Skaven Slaves here in that case. And Tretch there. Okay, let's do it. Play Claw Catapults, guys. Always get them. Okay, let's go for that unit there. that in there just to slow them down. To be honest, this is much easier than I was expecting it to be. They've done really dumb things here. haven't come anywhere near our warp by throwers and I haven't felt the need to move them uh, move my warp by throwers closer because we are trashing these guys and Skaven slave slingers are dying who the hell gives a shit 
Um, there is no real threat here from what I can see. Let's just stick a unit of clan rats down there. They've been aiming at that general something fierce, and that's a complete waste of ammo. Get these to here, Tretch can go there. to there, get another unit of clan rats out. It's not the one that I meant to move there. This is the one that I meant to move there. That's a hero, not a general, so it'll die faster, and we won. And only Skaven slaves were hurt in this production. If you look at those slingers and the number of kills they got there, I reckon Storm Vermin would have gotten fewer kills than that. And we'll take the extra food because we need it. Get our costs down again. We get to Renowned and Feared, and then we'll start buying the other stuff. Keep an eye on him. Cheaper Vermintides. Very nice. Chieftain of the Deep Warriors. Getting help! Kill Flame! More food. Be sneaky. To tobacco. Get that next turn. Triangulation there. Must Didn't even think of using... um. Oh, bless with filth there. Using warp lightning there. I tend not to because I concentrate so much on my um Marathi, what do you want? If we can get it for free, we'll go for it. Uh I tend to concentrate on my plague priest for the magic. It's the passive buffs that I really like from the Warlock Engineers. Let's have a look at the public order at Blacklight Tower. Blacklight Tower we don't especially need to worry about because who the hell cares. Now here, I'm just going to sack it. That's helped our food a fair bit. Now, I'm not going to take that straight away. I want to go to Karon Kar before they can raise another army. Or another full-sized army, put it that way. Now our money's better... Ballistics Calibration. Smells treacherous. And more Bless with Filth.
Uh, let's just go for set examples for now. In fact, you know what? I'm going to say let's go right the way through. To... Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. I forgot that there's like crossovers here. Let's just go for set examples. We'll look at the rest in a minute. Ah, we want walls here. Definitely, definitely, definitely. And we're going to get rid of that problem, are we? Do you know what? No, we'll hold on to it for now. Let's just get the growth. There we go. Attack, fight. Now you can auto resolve that, but you don't really want to do that. You could lose valuable units rather than just the Skaven slaves. To battle, so let's fight it. Now in this instance, because we don't have plague yet on our plague priest, Warp Lightning is possibly going to be our friend here. But let's concentrate on getting these walls down first. Leave those there. Let the Skaven slaves stay here. They can eat the shots. Screw them. Plaguey boy stays there. He stays there. That there. And then we'll leave these slingers here. Get that tower down. This is pretty routine because we got them and we took that army out before they could uh, get back and defend this location. So we basically got a free hit at it. We'll get rid of this tower as well. No, it looks like we aimed at the walls by mistake. That was dumb of us. But that's okay. We got loads of ammo. Bring this round to here. And then we'll just aim along this line here. This is going to be very, very simple, it appears. Famous last words, but this doesn't look like we've got any problems at all. Mostly the ranged units we want to get rid of. The sooner we can get them shattered, the better. That one's shattered. Go for that. Ah, oh, no, 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 no. Go for this. Try and shatter them as well. As soon as the ranged units are done, we can start sending our slingers forward to start picking off other stuff, basically. Shattered. Right, how are we looking for let's try and take that out so we got a hole in the walls for our warp fire throwers. There we go. And let's get the slingers forward. They're scaven slaves, they're not that important. If some of them get shot, some of them get shot. And we're going to send this guy forward to zap zap these. Oh no, that's not a good spot. There we go.
Come on. Ah, they went back. They went up onto the walls. Whatever. They won't last long up there, that's for sure. Easy. We've got Caron Car nice and early. It's ours. Victory! I'm getting good at this. Gonna sack it. We're going to take it, and I mean, taking it to tier 3 does cause us some trouble. It's entirely up to you. In my case, I probably wouldn't do it because recovering food for Tretch is really difficult. So I'm just going to leave it at tier 1, and we'll build it up from there. Got plenty of growth here anyway because you've got three ports. Once you've taken everything, that is. And from here, let's start getting his stuff. So, yeah, I mean, getting in regeneration isn't bad. Into these, it's sort of a your mileage may vary thing anyway. So, get that range buff, get evasion. Okay, so we've got an Undercity established at Black Crag. That's nice. And what we're going to do now is we're going to force march down to here, because there's no other army there. Public order means that there's going to be a rebellion here. I'm not especially worried about it, because it's only Tier 1, so if we have to retake it, we have to retake it. Uh, Claude Coast, Hotex Column has almost got another... Has almost got walls, I should say. And uh, I'm not going to prioritise that. Moment. Let's have a look over here. So that's the only one that we've got an Undercity in so far. But this has paid off. This will give us more food. I feel like we should definitely get the Tier 1 food building here. And because we want that spread, do we want to go for the extra there? We've got... We're not discoverable at all. Let's go for that. We do need extra food for Tretch. Now, what we could look at is this one. For Black Crag. Because Black Crag actually makes good money. In fact, yeah, Black Crag. We're not going to go for that one. We're going to go for this one. Which is more expensive, but we've got the money. And we're going to build this to conceal it. Because we'll get good cash off that. Solid cash, anyway. Put it that way. I mean, it might get taken by dwarfs at any moment, but we'll see. Actually, do you know what? That's quite a big investment for that right now. Let's hold off and wait and see what those dwarfs do. What we really want, though, is to get contact with Deathmaster Snitch. Got the imminent rebellion coming here. That's fine. We're going to take Slaver's Point 
and then we'll rush up and retake Caron Car if it falls. We won't use this just yet. Because it might fall. You know, they might immediately attack it. Or attack it before we've taken Slaver's Point. We could have hung around up there for the Rebellion to show up, but let's get rid of Caron Car as a faction. This might have Clan Rictus. No, they wanted us to pay them. That's hilarious. That's hilarious. Yeah, see, they've, they've besieged it straight away. But it was only tier 1. That's another big reason why I didn't want to take it above tier 1. From rear. Cain will be sated. Suck it. Take, take. Now, what we've got to decide here is how we're going to handle that. Because I could force march up there. We kill that for food, and then we turn Slaver's Point into a sack city to build up our food and money. But to be honest with you, I don't think we really need to do that. I'm going to take Slaver's Point. And we, j again, just tier one. And then for this, we're going to go with that extra ambush success chance is super useful. We want as many ambushes as we can get. We go for growth here. Repair that at um, Slaver's Point. Get that there. We're on the brink of actually being able to um, to raise a second army just with the amount of loot we can get. Like even if it's just a Skaven Slave Slinger army to follow Tretch around. Okay, they might go straight in for this, but if they do, they do. The only downside is they'll raise it. Okay, they didn't, so we're going to force march up. Our food situation is just appalling. Um... We'll go for the triangulation. And for him, we are definitely going Plague. Because that spell is awesome. Let's go down here and see how Black Crag's looking. Doesn't look like Grimgore's in any particular trouble. So let's go for that. And that. And we'll just let this stuff spread them. We could go for that to raise the likelihood of it um, spreading, but it costs extra food, so we're not going to do that. Public order, we'll go for that. That's fine. We'll retake it straight away. And in fact, to save ourselves a bit of time, what we're going to do is we're going to raise a general to do that. We're going to go for... Knowledgeable. Only tier 4. That's okay. We'll send him up there in Forced March. Take Caron Car back. And then what I'm going to suggest doing to get some food is go up here.
just keeping an eye on what's going on over here. Yeah, so... Alithanar is on his way up, that's okay. This guy... Forced march up, he'll get Karonkar back for us next turn. We are going to come to... Nagra. Because we want some food and money. To battle, I come after. Burn fire, it's all. It's not a lot of food and money, but it's food and money. And then the high, the dark elves can take that if they want to. It's not a big deal for us. And we'll occupy Karen Car. We can only get it to tier two, so it's not really worth it. So just do that to there. Take him out to sea because he's only four loyalty, and do that. You go for growth there. And you hit the dominating scheme to get extra food and growth. And we're now looking pretty solid, aren't we? So, Stretch can go over here and terrorize Shagrath. But what I'm going to say is once we've done that, we'll just come over here. We'll have done enough damage to Aghol to let the Dark Elves come in there. We'll then come over here to start dealing with... Ooh, Alithanar's actually already got some problems himself. So... Yeah, Caron... Clarkerond, these bloody Dark Elf names. Uh, yeah, they've got their own problems already. That's fine. Sometimes he'll be pushing his way right through them. On this occasion, they've taken him out. I always recommend keeping a wary eye to your west for him. This is not a problem. Uh, melee, we'll give that to Tretch. This is food and money. This is very generous. Okay. In this instance, we don't really have anything to worry about here. Their army is nothing. It literally is just a... F oh, we've got flank protection as well. This is even better. Like, this is this is wonderful. Much generosity, lads. Really appreciate the thought. We're not even going to risk losing any Skaven slaves here. Screw it. Go to there. Put those there. And let's do our thing. Someone won now just to start that up because we have a huge range advantage. It's going to take them ages to reach us. And our Plague Claw catapults are going to be pounding them almost the entire way there. Here. Wherever, you know, they're coming towards us, so it's here, technically speaking. Go 
bits of that. Let's get him out. Completely forgot he's already got plague. And they dodged it, because of course they did. Forces shoot as much as possible. And we're done. Definitely go for food again, because it's not like we lost much. I leave my musk here. Yeah, I'd say get that. To battle, Auto. I come after. Strike them roughly, yes, yes. Call me Lord Craven. That auto resolve is a bit tougher than others, but not that much tougher. We lost a unit of Skaven slaves. What a shame, lads. What a shame. Sack that one. And then what I'm going to say is take it, but don't do anything to like control it. Just let it go. We'll leave there straight away afterwards. And then here we get that extra ambush success chance. Oh, he's got more. Extra casualty replenishment. And oh, he's got regen as well. Go for that too. Triangulation. And now we will start... We'll get him Howling Warp Gale because that's useful if we wind up facing some high elf flyers, which we will eventually. Plague. And something that I completely forgot to do for some reason is start building this up to tier 3 because then we can get rattling guns and that's when shit gets real. This is all good. Our public order here is okay. We could actually put the public order thing on to go into positive public order, but we're going to be back soon anyway, so why bother?
Now to get to these really good ones here, we do have to get through this, so... We will just go to that one for now. Not really much point continuing on with Ag Hole up here. We've got bigger fish to fry. We've just encountered Nagarod. Let's see what their attitude is towards us, because that determines a lot of what we plan to do from here. Nagarond is actually pretty positive towards us, so let's see if we can get really good terms out of them. Ah, uh, no, 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 no. Offer it. I refuse. We'll offer a bit more because the trade is eventually going to be worthwhile for us. Offer, we'll offer six hundred. No. Yeah, we'll hold off on it for now then. But let's have a quick look at other options here. You can normally get trade with Clarkeron, but apparently not. Deadwood Sentinels. No. And there's nothing here, especially worthwhile for us. I would say. Let's start heading back. So this goes to here. We're going to head over to Karond Car. Start building up Slaver's Point. And you know what? I'm going to say let's do it in Forced March because we've got the kind of army which doesn't really worry too much about Forced March. Gonna go for increased mobility. Our financial situation is solid. Plague. He's one step away from getting um, Arcane Conduit. And then you get Nagarond up there doing their thing. That was where she was trespassing. I thought she was trespassing down here for a second, which is why I thought they might be on like a war footing with us, but they weren't, which is nice. Call me Lord Craven. We get to here. Take another quick look around here. Say go for growth again here. And that's pretty much it, guys, to be honest. Because from here, what we have now, we have the Clawed Coast and the Broken Lands consolidated. Obviously, we're building this territory up. We've got good terms with Nagaroth. We've got decent income. We've got solid money. We could raise another army if we felt the need to. But from here, you can make your decision on what you want to do. Do you want to turn on Nagarond and take their territory from them? Do you want to actually go back and expand into the east, if that's what suits you? Do you want to go for um, Norska? Do you want to go for Albion and then attack the Empire and Britonia? Maybe meet up with Ikiklaw? Or do you want to go south and go for Ulf one, which seems to be the most tempting option. So that's pretty much it, guys. We're 32 turns in here. The reality is I probably could have stopped this a few turns ago. Because you've seen what you really needed to do. Once you've got this lot in place, there's not really a lot else for me to show you. It all becomes about which direction you personally want to expand your campaign in. So... If you've enjoyed this um, video and you're thinking, maybe I do want to give the meme lord the most underrated, in my opinion, lord in the game a go, enjoy it. Um, leave me a, a subscription, a like, all that good stuff. But as I always say on my other videos, don't let YouTubers tell you what to do. Just if you enjoyed it, subscribe, like, let me tell you what to do. Thank you very much for watching, guys, and I hope to see you in the next one. Cheers.